Hi, I'm Bob, your host for this episode, and today I'm here in Tokyo's Shibamata. Shibamata Teishakuten Monzen Sando Shopping Street, that is a tongue twister, is a shopping street that is derived and it's, it's born out of uh, Shibamata Teishakuten Temple's approach. In Japan and perhaps abroad, this area is famous and it's well known because of the very popular Japanese movie series Otoko wa Tsuraiyo, which means it's tough being a guy. And well, this filmed from 1969 to 1995, and there are landmarks and many references to it here. But even if you're not familiar with that film, you can still be well, pleased and excited by the atmosphere here. It has this kind of unique retention to the times of the past, to the Edo period and the Meiji period. So come join me as I take a look around Shibamata Teishakuten Monzen Sando Shopping Street. <laughs> I'm from America. America? America oh, welcome right. to Shibamata. Arigato. But you live in Japan. So this. Oh, how many? How long? So this shop is a souvenir shop. Souvenir shop. Golden Pool is in Japanese Kin no Unko. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Kin means money yes. and gold. Sounds um, same in Japanese. Um, and Un. Luck and poop. Good luck and poop also sounds same. So ah. Kin no Unko Shotun. Shotun. Kin Un. Kin Un means good luck from here, France. Merci Kekedo. Acha Conquer Crisis from France. Uh, from China. Uh, Alright, so basically, if you buy the golden poop, <laughs> you can get some good luck. Yes. She's taking my job, I think, actually. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, she's going to be the new host of the show. <laughs> Okay, so we've entered the kind of the main part of the area and yeah, it's like a time slip. It has such a great atmosphere feeling to it. It feels old, it feels authentic because it is. And I can't wait to explore it all with you. どうも、相場の始めらしいんだよね。その当時からほとんど変わってないんです。あ、そうですか。大正とか明治の初め、昭和の初めの頃の町並みが今もそのまま残ってるんですね。2代、3代続いていて、なおかつ売ってるものも同
a grass dumpling and it has anko on top and so the red bean paste. Now I'm told that unwrapping it is a little bit tricky and I might lose some of the anko. So I'm trying to move it very slowly. Ooh, now this one is supposed to be very good, so I'm gonna give it a try. Mm. Mm -hmm. I may have bitten too much. It's gonna be hard for me to talk. This is very good. You can taste the style of the grass, that kind of flavor in there. Right, it's very tasty. You've got to try it too. <laughs> when I say it's big shrimp, it's a big, I guess you could say prawns almost. It's going to be hot, so I will probably burn myself a little bit eating it. It's very hot. That was good. I'm gonna open up like that so I get a little bit. But the inside manages to stay kind of tender and soft and juicy even. I wasn't expecting that actually. A lot of times you get tempered and it's just dried out. There's just too much oil. This is soft and juicy, incredibly tasty. Just maybe this is what it tasted like hundreds of years ago. There's sembe or the rice crackers. There's just so many to choose from. So I asked, what does he recommend? He said, this one's a little bit softer, a little bit easier to eat. A lot of times the sembe is pretty hard. So it's got a little bit of seaweed in it, of course. Oh, that's yeah, pretty good. You can see the flakes of the sembe, or flakes of the, the seaweed in there. That's very good. It's a standard, tasty sembe. Another famous location here, Toraya. And we're gonna try uh, some dango again, some kuso danga dango. <laughs> I can't even say the right words, but we're gonna try it and it's gonna be good, I bet. Now this one obviously is a little bit different. It's not on the stick form, it's not skewered. It has of course the anko on the side. And you basically, it's kind of like you make your own meal so this one's probably gonna be stuck in my mouth for a while. I mean, it's the same flavor, but it's different. In the other place, you get a little bit more of that grass flavor. The more you're just getting the red bean paste, the anko. Two different tastes. They're both good. So you can go the, the whole way down the street and probably try this at every shop, and it's not gonna taste exactly the same. All right, so we reached another famous place, Kameya-san. Uh, すごい。こんにちは。こんにちは。なんか団子。いや、メインだよね。そうそう、この通りはね、草団子が名物なんですよね。そうだよね。うん。いろんな店で。そう、いっぱいあるでしょ。そう、いう夏だけ。アイスもありますね。今。アイスもこれね、草団子にアイスが乗ったね、アイス草団。これもね、春夏ぐらいだね。すごい人気。いやでも冬も食べたいからね。そう、冬もやってる。あの、そうやってる。食べ
energy. It's just kind of like a stamina food. So that's why it's good for the summer. You need more energy in the heat. So I am going to get my energy and I'm going to keep eating. And when you come here, you should eat this too. I actually said that this is miso soup. I didn't look at it when I opened it up. It's actually suimono, which is just like a, just a Japanese soup. It's, a, it's very plain, uh, but it's very healthy for you. So in case anybody was watching was like, hey, that's not miso soup. You're right. But we got to correct it. I will continue eating. On February 13, 2008, the cultural landscape of Shibamata Katsushika was selected as the first national important cultural landscape in Tokyo. And at the heart of the area are Teishakuten Temple and the shopping street in front of the gate. Tokyo has historical and cultural landscapes such as Asakusa and Yanaka, and of course there are others, but Katsushika Shibamata was selected first. The reason for that is the Taishakuten Daikyoji Temple, which was founded in the early modern era. And of course, in front of the developed gates there, there was the shopping center. And all around it, the farming village, you know, which was kind of the foundation. And so there's the scenery of the old families, the temples, the shrines, and the passed down from generation to generation all around the area. Besides that, there are the industrial and social infrastructures and suburban areas after the 19th century. And it's the scenery that conveys the history. And of course, the maintenance is how it spreads out, the traces of waterways, roads, etc. And it seems that, you know, because it's maintained so well, it becomes that cultural landscape. So visit Shibamata Taishakuten Momai as a place where you can feel history in your daily life. The shopping streets look very exotic to foreign tourists, I think. And Katsushika Ward's inbound efforts have yet to begin. After grasping the evaluation and needs from foreign countries, it seems that each promotion strategy for people and foreigners is under consideration now. So this is a, a city steeped in history with a very bright future. And we hope you'll come to the Shibamata Teishakuten Monzen Sando shopping street and enjoy shopping and enjoy experiencing the culture and the history of the Edo period. And I want you to go ahead and leave me a comment and tell me which of the places you saw today are you gonna visit first when you come here. Until next time.